I have my free NAS shirt on today, so I said, you know, I should do a video about jails. Uh, there's something that I wrapped my head around a long time ago to get a good concept of them. They're a little bit different, and there's some nuances to setting them up uh, that sometimes causes some confusion. And I have a love-hate relationship with jails, so I don't run a lot of things in them. Uh, but it's actually very practical, especially for people asking, like, hey, can I run this in a jail, for example? Plex Media, because maybe you store all your media on FreeNAS and you want to run it in a jail. This will help you in general with jails and kind of give you an idea of how they work. And they're, like I said, I have a love-hate relationship, and I'll show you why. Let me jump over to here, get my face out of the way. So there is an update coming to jails. So this, so you know, we're on FreeNAS 11.1 U4. It's April of 2018, so that's what I'm running. That's the latest current stable release. Uh, they are doing some changes in them. And of course, then there's gonna be migrations uh, for the way it used to work in the Warden system and the, the new way it works in the IOKH. And I'll leave a link so you can read through all the documentation, but this is just the uh, doc.freenas.org and the details of the jails. So let's start with what is a jail and what makes it different than a VM. And uh, I found this on Stratoscale, but you can just Google Docker versus VM, and it's the same equivalence concept. I know someone's screaming that the FreeBSD jails are different than Docker, but it's kind of giving you an idea because this graphic still represents how it works in general. I'm not gonna cover every little specific. So if you have a VM, you have your physical layer, your hardware, the bare metal infrastructure here at the bottom, then we have the operating system running on there. And let's use Citrix, for example, the operating system being CentOS slash Linux, um, and then we have the Zen hypervisor that runs on top and then each VM is fully a P is containered all the way top to bottom from the guest OS to the bins and libraries that run it to the application. So for example, if it's a, the guest OS is Windows, it has all the Windows support libraries in there and then you run your Windows apps. It's if it's Linux, whatever flavor you can run the Linux on there, then it has all the libraries to support whatever app you're on there. Each one's completely containerized. That means that these Individual VMs can easily just be passed, generally speaking, if they're in OVF format, from one machine to another because everything is self-contained. So when you update or move, let's say, from Citrix Zen server to XCP Zen server, you just take the VMs and move them over and they work perfectly fine. Not a problem. Same thing goes like, for example, I've talked about VirtualBox, which I still use on my desktop. I can export the entire VM to VirtualBox and just bring it into another system over here because it's a VM and all the libraries and support is there. FreeBSD jails work differently. So here's your bare metal, here's your FreeBSD, we're gonna use an example, and instead of the word Docker, let's just say it said jails here. Now, that means they're going to share the kernel. So we have the bins and libs being separate, but the kernel, there's some sharing going on. So what that does is there's an interdependency. So these have to depend on the ability for the kernel to support it. That means FreeBSD jails will run FreeBSD-based things because the under line kernel is the same, so they have to have support for it. This is why you just can't throw anything you want in a jail. It has to be something, for example, that supports FreeBSD and has a compilation for it. Um, if it doesn't, well, it's not necessarily going to work. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're there. This also is why when you update the kernel and update the operating system, you can cause problems with the jails because as they progress, if the jail was built with an old version of the jail, you're going to need the newer uh, version of that system. So that's why they talk about that here, is as they're moving, there's going to be some transitions and hopefully there'll be some scripts to bring the jails up to date, but this is just a concern. Now the data within the jails is stored on the free NAS drives itself, so it's not like you'd lose data, but you can lose compatibility between upgrades. This is my one thing about running anything absolutely mission critical in jails, is make sure you back them up and are prepared for any problems that may arise by moving to a new version of FreeBSD or as free NAS updates, it's sometimes based on the new version of FreeBSD, and they have notes in there of what breaks. Uh, so just thoughts to have in there and why I don't just stick everything in a jail. You know, it's it's good. It's a great way to use up some other resources that are mostly sitting idle on your machine, but it can cause those issues. So that's my caveat with jails and why I'm not like the biggest put everything in a jail person. 
because of the troubleshooting that comes with it. But let's talk about putting things in a jail. And I do run my sync thing in a jail. Uh, I was running externally and I moved it back in a jail partly uh, to do this video. <laughs> and uh, it's just convenient. And my system mostly sits idle despite having iSCSI and everything else that this system supports. This is actually my production system um, for the other servers that attach to it. It really doesn't use a lot of power. So we said, hey, why not run sync thing in there so it can run in, in that as a jail. Now, first thing is, how do you get a jail installed? Well, you usually pick the plugin you want and it builds the jail. And the way that works is we're gonna go here and we can choose sync thing again because it will install multiple versions of the same software if you want, or I could choose transmission or whatever. I do Plex, but there's a lot more setup because uh, Plex has an entire setup process after you get it in there and I don't really have time to do that or the desire to put that on my server right now. Um, but if you add this, you're gonna run through the install for sync thing and we'll go ahead and set, uh, add it. Are you sure you wanna put the sync thing plug in? And we hit okay. It's gonna run through the download and we'll fast forward through this real quick. And now I go to the installed plugins and now there's two sync things. Pretty simple. So here's the first one that's running, and here's another copy of it, and it creatively calls it Sync Thing 2. And when we go to my jails, we have Sync Thing 1 and Sync Thing 2. Pretty straightforward. Now, the IP addresses. I have my jails set to hand out addresses that are outside my DHCP range. And we're gonna go over and show you the configuration of the jail here. So here's where it relies. So jail root is on my creatively named four drives rate slash jails. You can pick whichever uh, storage container you want to hold the jails. By default, it just grabs the first storage container uh, when you're setting this up. When you go to advanced here, I have the network set up as that and I have the start address and end address. And I happen to like them being in a static range. And this is just my preference. You can let the jails grab a DHCP, but I just like to predictively know, uh, make sure they're gonna be at the same point all the time and not possibly get a different address. So you set up the network insider notation, pick the beginning, pick the end. By the way, make sure it is outside of your DHCP range. My DHCP range stops at 239. And so I begun this at 240 to 250. So I can have to 10 jails running in here. I never need really more than one. Now, by default, the jail starts running, but the plugin does not run. And then we have to add storage. Now, I've already added some storage to jail, but I'll add storage to this one just to give you an example. And then we're gonna jump into my working one so you can get an idea how it works. So by default, there's no storage in a jail. Because a jail is containerized and it when it loads, it does not get to see all the drives. So if we uh, go here and we're gonna go to mount, nothing there, nothing mounted, there's no storage on here. Uh, it only has what the jail can see because the jail starts inside the jail. It's not starting at the root of your system versus, let me close this window. We go over here to shell. Here is the root of my system. I know it's kind of small, but it says four drives, rage, and Jupyter. Actually, let me open up a new window to make it bigger and give you a better idea here. So here's logged into my FreeNAS machine, and here is four drives, rage, and Jupyter, so the mount has something. But when we go into the jails, and we have see how we have sync thing one and sync thing two, so we're gonna go into sync thing two. This is the root of the jail, so it actually starts here. So when you log into the jail, it's starting at this root not your other. This is part of the way jails keep you protected. So the software inside them is inside and nested in. Being that it's nested in, you have to add what storage you want it to touch. And this is part of a security. Uh, so jails, to keep them secure, they can't just go wherever they want on the operating system. So now you have to share in the data that you want with them. And we're gonna go out to sync thing one, go to the mount inside of here. This is my running one. And we have three folders sync, Tom backup, and web work. Now, these are the files, these are the folders that I'm using for sync thing. How did I get them there? Well, let's talk about that. So we're gonna go ahead and delete this one because I just don't, actually I'm gonna delete the plugin which will uh, delete that. So I don't really need this version on here. So delete, say yes. I don't really need it. It's gonna go ahead and destroy that jail. All right, that's destroyed. So we go back over to the jails. We see this one here. Now, 
we can start and stop the gel here. We can open up a shell which starts inside the gel. There is a way to, if you want, you can SSH into the gel as opposed to into the machine because the gel does have its own network stack, hence the reason it has a different IP address here. So if we look real quick and hit edit jail, go to advanced mode as well. By default too, you can auto start to jail and whether or not you want to put it in that. And you can also pass a few of your parameters just so you know that's where this is for that. And I could force a different IP address on it, but I just let it assign based on the previous settings we talked about. So add storage right here down at the bottom. This is the part people get confused about. So when you have source and destination storage, you're like, what does that mean? And let's say you have a media library because you're setting up Plex, or in this case, sync thing, and I want to give data to it. So we go to mount, we pick from our storage sources, and we say four drives RAID, and we can say, I want the Clonezilla folder to go into there, and then we're going to go over here, mount. Hey, and there's those ones here, and we're just going to say, go ahead and make it here slash clonezilla and I'm not going to got spell right and then this would create a mount inside of there now couple caveats with this this is important and this is where people get stuck a lot permissions the way free ja free NAS jails work you pretty much need to have the permissions wide open in order to do this let me give you an example so we're going to go over here to storage we're going to look at one of my existing shares that I have in here, like the sync thing data folder. Please note the permissions of that. You have to give all the permissions and set them recursively because the free NAS jail needs to have especially this other permission in order to read and write in those directories. Maybe you only want the free NAS jail to be read only, that's fine too, but set the permissions accordingly. If you don't do that, it will not have permission to read and write and the jail won't work properly. So that is the thing about jail. Because it runs as its own separate user on there and it creates a user inside the jail, it doesn't relate to the users in the system. And because of that, there is a discrepancy in permissions. And if you don't have the permissions opened up for that, you will have some issues. So if you have your media library, you want to make sure the media library has full open permission like that, and then you share it into there. Now let's go back to the jails, and we look at the storage. And here's what the storage looks like once you have it mounted. So here's the sync thing data, LTS, mounted to slash sync. Here's this one here to Tom Backup, and here's the web work to web work. Now all these, and like I said, if you go to any one of them on storage, they have all their permissions, and this is the source and destination. So when you are creating the source, the source is your actual free NAS machine. Destination is the place where you want it to show up inside the jail. So it starts at slash MNT. And that's where we go here, and this is inside the jail itself. And we can see those folders there. So it's the four drives raid, jails, sync thing underscore one, slash mount. So the jail itself is completely stored on four drives RAID, then it's subbed out, and then mount is MNT is the default, but you could actually store anywhere. We could create, if we wanted, we could store it here in the root of the jail. For example, create like a media folder and then store everything there. So it's just kind of preference. Uh, general, when you're working with Linux, you mount things under mount. Like I said, it comes down to preference. Now, with that being said, how does it work once you want to access the plugin? Well, when you want to access the plugins, and once they're installed, so right here, make sure it's on. This is something I've always just, the way the interface works is a little bit strange. So when you're on the plugins, you go over here to plugins on this side, go here to plugins, and then it can be found there. Now here is my plugin for this and how I can load into it. So there's all the things that I have synced in here. And you can see there. Now, if you know the IP address, and this is something really handy, and you know the port it's running on, and when you set up the jail to have static I predictable IP addresses, and we go over here to jails, and we know it's right here, even without going to the plugin link, I know I could get to it by typing in 192.168.3.240, and I happen to know sync thing by default runs on 8384, so you can get right to it. Hence the advantage and part of the reason I like them running a static. So you can use this to set up Plex, you can use this to set up a lot of other things on here. Now one of the other things that I've noted is I used to run clone deploy and it broke 
uh, recently, and it's, it, the project's been out of date for a while, and a few people have asked me about it. And this is one of those problems that you run into with jails. Uh, the project no longer was supported. It had some problems, and we got rid of it. And even once it's installed through the jail, it can have problems later as you update versions back to the very first part of this talk we were talking about. So that is an issue. Now, you can, if you get really fancy with this, when we go over here to plugins, you can upload your own plugins. You can just build your own jail separately from the plugins itself. By default, when you load a plugin, it has parameters that it downloads to install this. These are maintained over at Freenas. So when you pull the plugins, it pulls in all the parameters to get it up and running. But you can go raw and just build your own. You can start by just going in here, build a jail, Put whatever you want inside of it as long as it's supported in FreeBSD because like I said, there's an interdependency on what can run in there. I've seen some people run a few different things in the forums and have some custom options that you can do. Uh, so hopefully this gives you a better idea of how that works and how the storage works. As the storage part's one where I think people get stuck. They can click the plugin and they go, yes, I got it working. But if you don't map the storage properly to a storage on your machine, you're going to have problems. Now the good news is by default, some jails don't need the storage because it's going to be whatever you do is going to be stored within a jail. So if you set something up, let's say own cloud, and you don't give it an external storage, it'll all still be stored within the jail itself without any external storage. So it's still protected by ZFS. Just make sure you know when you're backing things up, you have to back the jail up. That's where all your data is stored. Versus me with SyncThing, I have SyncThing pointing to external spots and on different arrays. If you notice, that sync things in, is under Mount Jupiter web work, Mount Jupiter here, but the jails themselves, go to jails, are actually stored, actually, where is it? Configuration is stored on my other array, the four drives RAID. So I have multiple arrays, and you can do that. You can move the jails, uh, you can move them around. They all, like I said, this is all something that uh, you can configure if you have a lot of custom places and you can move them around to wherever you want. So like I said, hopefully this is helpful and gives you a better understanding of how the jails work in FreeNAS um, and kind of gives you some overall better understanding of the storage part. And like I said, permissions, permissions, permissions. The permissions on these have to be open in order for this for it to work. So they have to make sure that they're owned by the process that the jail's running in or just check all the boxes, make them open and away you go. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.